Hello, Rim of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery of Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 270. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, everybody. We are excited because we're a couple of weeks away from the conference. We are. We have lots of food fixed. Yesterday, Steph was in the, the kitchen over there making cookies, and um, she always cuts the, the sugar in half, but they, <laughs> but they are... They still taste wonderful. Yeah, they um, do. She's, you know, to me that we've been away from sugar so long that if we get um, something that's really sweet. It's it's over the top, and so we. Yeah. I and the boys were in charge of quality control yesterday, that's right. and they uh, had we to, made sure that they, they were to check just them out. Top notch <laughs> cookies going on. But um, I've got a few days uh, of things to do, but then mostly it's going to be just preparing and praying for the presence of the Lord to be in that place because we're getting. Getting things going, we got to have the plumbers are coming back in this this week to to f- fix something. We got the uh, audio visual people almost done. They've got they're waiting on. Yeah, they they got to do some this week, and then there's some things for us to be able to plug in up front that the connectors haven't come in yet, and we're just believing God they're supposed to come in yeah. next week because the the, the week after that's yeah, the conference, so we got to right. have those connectors in. <laughs> we need them. We need them. Um, I have a lot of times if I have so many things to think about, I have a hard time sleeping, and and I've done that here lately. Last night I was up about two something, I guess, and just laying in the bed praying, and uh, boy, it just it just came to me what God wanted me to say today because I still was, you know, just had a few notes and things, but I, I really didn't know what direction He wanted me to go, and boy, if I ever had. A sense of the presence of God on something it was that and um what it was was he it was like I I saw the conversation with Mary when she went to Elizabeth and I want to read that for you Luke 1 39 through 45 it says and Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary the babe leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leapt in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And immediately after I just I just saw that and heard that, the Lord said, there's a leaping coming of the, the prophetic before Jesus returns again. He's coming again. And so there's just as uh, John the Baptist leapt in the womb, there's going to be a leaping yes. of the prophetic. And I saw... Prophets going to cities and just speaking words and judgment over evil. It, you know, it's um, it's so strong. It's so hard for me to to put into words. But I I just knew it. I thought I don't know how long it is before Jesus comes. But this this uh, prophetic leaping is beginning now. Yes, it is. You know, one of the things you see in the Word, and I'm looking it up real quick, because in Malachi is the the last book of the Bible, of the of the Old Testament. And in Malachi 4 and 5, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. And one of the things that prophecy teachers have always understood is that with Messiah's first coming and second coming that the spirit of Elijah would be released within the body. John the Baptist moved in the spirit of Elijah. I remember 
let's see, it was probably, let's see, it was the one down in Arkansas, so it was like 2005. I'm sitting uh, at a colloquium that John Garr held, and one of the guys was one of the leading experts on the Dead Sea Scrolls here in America. He's out of California. And we got to talking about the, the Essenes. And of course, that's where, you know, when, when John the Baptist and his mother fled after they had killed Zechariah, they fled to the Essenes. And he got this big smile on his face, and he said, can I share with you a secret that we've discovered? And I said, yes. He said the Essenes were the keepers of the mantle of Elijah. When John the Baptist came, he was literally wearing the mantle of Elijah. And he called out for repentance. He called out sin, even among Herod, the leader. Yeah. He, he did not mince words. He announced who Jesus was. I mean, all these things, there was this, this prophetic unction that, that hit him, and it was so strong that the Pharisees came to him and said, are you Messiah? That's how strong it was because he was the precursor. He's the forerunner for what Messiah is getting ready to do. In the last days, there is going to be an outpouring of the anointing of Elijah. Where there's going to be mm-hmm. a lot of Elishas yeah. running around under that unction, under yeah. that anointing, announcing, preparing the way for the That's Lord. Right. There's going to be one last cry for repentance. That's there's it. going to be cries for judgment. I had a good friend of mine, Dr. John Gar, and I've got to wipe the tears out of my eyes so I can read this. You know, sometimes when the anointing just gets so strong, you can't help but cry. Now, Habakkuk what came in a time when they were returning back into the land, but all hell was against them from rebuilding the temple, okay? We need to understand that the enemy has done everything that he, has can't, that he could to destroy the temple of God, the church of the living God in this day. We have and preachers <laughs> that no longer preach the word. We have seminaries that no longer preach the word, that they're, they're more following Baal than they are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, I want you to listen. This is out of Habakkuk 1, uh, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. How long, O Lord, must I cry for help? And you do not listen. I cry out to you and, and cry out to you violence, and you do not intervene. Why do you let me see iniquity? Why do you simply gaze at evil? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and discord. There, this is why the law is numb and justice be, uh, never comes. For the wicked surround the just. This is why justice comes forth perverted. Okay, this is exactly what's going on today. It is. You know, the enemy really does not have a great imagination. He uses the same tactics over and over and over again. In fact, the Bible, the Apostle Paul says that he is limited to those things that are common to man. He repeats the same pattern over and over and over again. He's doing the same thing. And Habakkuk is praying, crying out, okay, they're, they're doing all these things. They're, they're trying to, to keep the temple from being rebuilt. They're trying to keep us from returning to the word. They're doing all these things. And here's the prophet's conclusion. This is, this is found in Habakkuk 2 and 11. This is what he declares, and this is what's getting ready to happen. I will take my stand and keep watch, and I will take my place on the tower, and I will keep watch to see what the Lord says and how I should answer When he speaks strong words to me, God is getting ready to speak strong words, and a lot of the body isn't going to want to hear it. No, they don't. They don't want to hear it. (laughs) We have become intoxicated with Mystery Babylon, and there's a lot of ways that you can get intoxicated with Mystery Babylon, doctrines that puff up the flesh, that really bolster carnality rather than crucifying it. (laughs) Excuse me. (laughs) It's hard to preach and cry at the same time. We've also got intoxicated with the wealth of Babylon that we will compromise. So many, so much of the body of Christ has compromised if it increases the offering. All these different things. There, there is a downward spiral when you begin sipping from the cup of Babylon. It, 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 it mimics either drugs or alcohol. You get this warm fuzzy. Then you, you get to where there's almost euphoria. Then you feel invincible. And we have a lot of crazy things right now being taught in spiritual warfare that are not biblical. And if they were doing so good, then why is everything going to hell in a handbasket, okay? we we got to ask some of these things. And other ones are saying don't do warfare at all. Yeah, don't do warfare at all. 
And then you get to the place of intoxication. That's when you begin getting compromise and you begin getting off and you get to the place of addiction. Now, addiction is a very dangerous thing because addiction, you will do anything for that fix, anything for this thing that we get from Babylon. And that's where a lot of the church is right now. I remember when I was in the military, uh, because I was at command headquarters of 3rd Infantry Division, we got a, base, a basic intelligence briefing, and they said, you know, GIs, and this, this was to all the ones that were coming in. Okay, we know you guys like to drink. We know you guys like to party. Do it on base. Do not go outside the base and drink a lot because there are agents. I mean, we were just 20 minutes away from East Germany. Oh, yeah, they'd okay. be after them if they were vulnerable. They will get you drunk. They will Mm -hmm. put you in compromising positions, and then they will try to turn you to be an agent of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Guys, that's the And What did they use? They used drug and alcohols and sex to do that. And they're doing the same thing. Still doing it today. Same thing, just in a different form, and they've done it in the church. This is what was going on in Habakkuk's day. The enemy did everything they could to try to prevent the people of God from doing what they were supposed to do. Then they would contaminate them, keep them away from the word, take them to other avenues and everything else. To where he's saying, listen, there's not only violence against us, but there's iniquity in the people. And uh, we, we need help. And he says, here's what I'm going to do. Because of this, I've got to take my stand as a prophet. I've got to take my position as a prophet because God's not, de- get, he's not getting ready to speak a light word. He's not getting ready to speak a happy word. He's getting ready to speak a strong word. Yeah. And I've got to be That's strong it. to be able to speak it forth, and I Man. will not flinch. I will not move. If I've got to call out the sins of Herod, I'm going to do it. That's right. Oh, that's, that's what's getting ready to happen. I saw it. I saw it last night. I thought I, I already know some that are, are going to Washington, and I, and I don't think that they've, they've done what I saw yet. I think they've been preparing for it. They're making declarations. But I think that God's calling them on a national level. I know that God's shown me where I'm supposed to go in Springfield to list all of the judgments, just like I did in 2005 over Marshfield. I will list them. I will bring them before his court. Yes. And and he told me that one day that that would be a place where he dwells. And we have big ministries up there. You've got the... Assembly of God headquarters. You've Bible got Baptist. the, uh, but but there there is so much sin. Um, you know the the gay and lesbian community moved in there years and years ago from the Joplin area. Yeah, and remember the Joplin tornado. Yeah, said so the destruction there. Um, I'm not saying that's going to happen in Springfield. I'm just saying. But you also have a lot of the occult community, and there's a school a, of metaphysics a and of all it, that. A ton of up it. There. Um, and so part of what happened with Marshfield is it it was another, it's the um, another hot spot for witchcraft and the occult and drugs. And so, so it's like God's. It's almost like strategic targeting. You know, he's he's got people going, and so we're getting close to what. I, I knew I'd do years ago. It's just been a lot of years coming. Yeah. You know, and, how many how many years have I said that there are thousands of John the Baptist waiting in the wilderness mm-hmm. being ready to be released? Yeah, and it's and you've got to be so uh sure that those words are God. Yes. You have to, to have your flesh under that there's nothing in your flesh that can contaminate it. And you have to have great faith that um God's way more powerful than all the stuff you've seen. Because, I mean, that's that's why this is such a a pivotal time of the year. You know, it's no accident that they have the elections, presidential elections, congressional elections in November after Halloween because there's such power built in. You know that um, I saw a commercial just recently uh, for Six Flags they're having something called a fright fest and that was one of the most demonic things i've ever seen in my life yes it was they have the like people dressed up and some zombies and that one where there's somebody crawling and it looks like they're upside down. it was horrid it looked almost like something out of a that exorcist movie years ago and i thought what do you know what kind of atmosphere that's going to be and how many kids are going to go there and I mean, this is, it's a serious thing, you know, because it promotes a spirit of fear. It does. And the one thing 
we can't afford to have in these last days is fear. Yeah, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Why are we going trying to drink from that cesspool? Well, and it's it's part of it is money. You know how much money is is spent on costumes? There's even people get costumes for their little dogs. Yeah. And cats and things. And so I mean it's a huge money maker, but but there's but behind it is the promotion of fear. That's why Satan and and there's such high level demonic power because this there's actual sacrifices done. There are things done that um, are just you can't hardly talk about in public, and so all that's being built. Um, but the good news is, as I was thinking about this and that commercial, and I thought, oh, we got to pray over the kids because nobody knows there's anything. You know, most just people, even in the churches, just think, well, this is just a fun time for kids, and they don't realize the danger that you can be put in because if if you participate in something. You know, I was thinking about this the other day um, they, at the zoo in Springfield. They have a, I think it was last week or weekend or whatever, they had a day where it was a Harry Potter day. So you don't think about it, but you'd buy a ticket to go into that Harry Potter setting in the zoo. Yeah. So what those spirits that are involved in all that stuff, they they just lay claim to your purchase, and they say, you purchase me. yeah, And then they'll go after those families. And people don't think about that. They think, oh, Mary, that's just silly. I've watched this for almost 30 years, guys. This is no little, Halloween's no little thing. No, it's one of the highest satanic holidays, that and, and uh, Beltane and the, the, at the end of uh, April. But the good news is, is what God was telling me is that fear is going to have to take a back seat to his love, That's right. which crushes fear. Once you truly understand how much God loves you, the price that he paid to save you. And to have confidence in it. And to know that, you don't have fear. Once you get that, and you know, like for me, in seeing in the back of my mind, you know, all of the horrible things that happened, the back of your mind is convinced there's no safe place. Uh, you know, people that I love up here in the front, there's there's all this other stuff going on. There's no safe place. I've never seen God keep anybody safe. So you have you have to just block it off. You can't you can't survive in a circumstance like that where there is no safety. That's right. I mean, you stay in, and and I think that's why so many people in that area have PTSD. You're in a constant state of it because there's. You can't you can't trust God because you can't see his power until I saw him protect us. Yeah. And the fear left and it's not coming back. No, it's not. Because I saw how powerful he was. I saw there was nothing that could outdo him. And I found out he loved me. That's right. You know, First John tells us that perfect love, and some translations will translate that perfected love, and don't get caught up in the word perfect, that's teleos in the Greek, which means matured love. When the love of God is matured in you, that you really know him, the Bible says it casts out all fear. Well, when, when you've seen nothing but horrible things, and you've experienced all these horrible things, it is, um, you just can't make sense of it. You you can you can hear the truth all day long that God loves and He's going to take care of you and and you have the angels there to protect you. But if you've never seen it, you know, and nothing around you to show you that, it's hard to imagine it. Yeah. And what the the best thing that we've come up with 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 what we walked through is a back part of me that was caught in this finally decided, I'm going to fight you. If I die, I die. Yeah but I'm not going to live like this. And he backed that part up. Well, that, that's what I call a Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego moment. Yeah, I wouldn't you, that you, you look to key, you look to king in the eyes, and you say, if God delivers me, great. Yeah. If he doesn't, I'm not bowing. That's it. That's it. You see, you, you can't have the fourth man in the fire until you have that kind of determination to follow mm -hmm. God. And that's when the miracles begin to flow. It is not in this... In this um, Fluffy, 
Laodicean Christianity that we have in most of the church. And why, why do we see so many miracles on the missions field? They go over there and they say, listen, if I live for God, I live for God. If I die for God, yeah. I die for God. Because they're out there and they have nothing. There's there's no Laodicean mechanism for them no. to depend on. It's them and God. That's it. And then all of a sudden you start hearing about the lame walking and mm-hmm. the blind seeing and the dead being raised from the dead. Because they're, they're only dependent upon God. We, we have got to separate this mentality of dependence upon the uh, veil this thin veneer of, of civility around us because all it is is a thin veneer. And I, I tell you what, you know, when we um, just you know, here lately, you know, people are seeing that prices are going up on stuff and just how crazy, uh, you know, shopping is and everything, Mary. Wait till there's nothing. Oh. Wait till, you know, with what they would, with, with this great reset that, that they're doing. There's a, there's a lot that you're going to have to stand back and you're going to have to trust God and not be a part of the crowd. You know, when uh, when I was in the military, one of the things that they really drilled in us, because we had one where we had uh, situational awareness, where like when you're trying to control crowds, they said an individual can be extremely intelligent. But to, to quote my instructor, a group of people are stupid mm. because you have this herd mentality. And see, that what we see throughout the entire Word of God is these principalities and powers and, and the kingdom of darkness, they have been dealing with man ever since Adam. They know psychologically how to push the buttons. They know exactly how to cause panic, how to cause fear, all these different things. <coughs> and so they, they, they've got this down to a fine art that all we got to do is push this button and everybody will rush this way exactly the way that we want them to go, except for, except for, the man or woman of God that follows the Spirit of God. They're the mm-hmm. ones going in the opposite direction. They're the trout yeah. swimming upstream. That's right. And what principalities fear most is someone that follows God and doesn't follow their flesh. They're unpredictable. Not only are they unpredictable, they'll move in the power of God to destroy everything that you're doing. Mm-hmm. See, that, that's what we need loosed in this area because everything that they're doing, moving us toward this one world order and, and with, with, this, with the great reset that the World Economic Forum is talking about, is being empowered by the gates of hell. They're being instructed by principalities and powers. They're being instructed by watchers. They're being instructed by all these Boy, things. That's the truth. It is not their agenda. They're getting benefits of being, you know, they're, 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 they look at us as, as if we're puppets on their strings. But you know, the truth is they're puppets on the principality strings. Yeah. Okay. They, they're they just as much fodder to them as, as other people. They just don't know it. They just don't know you it. You know, that's a, a lot of what causes such fear is everybody thinks that, you know, everything is just God doing everything. And so if you're caught in, a, in Satan's trap, um, you, you fear because you think, well, okay, God's doing this. And most of what I've seen that people blame God for has nothing to do with, with, uh, with, him. with him. I talked to a woman the other day, and years ago, she was in a horrid accident. And I think a sister died, friends died, and... And she was the only one that lived. And she'd mentioned her dad went to church. And I said, well, I said, do you believe in Jesus? And she said, I used to. But she said, then he killed all of these people. And so I told her, I I said, God didn't kill them. No. I said, the enemy's the one that kills, steals, and destroys. Yeah, Jesus was very clear on that. And, And so see how Satan works? He does stuff however he was able to do that. He, he gets people in traps. He gets people caught in stuff. And then it makes it look like it's God's fault. And so, so then the fear factor takes off because nobody thinks, well, there's no safety. Okay, if God doesn't protect you, then... And that's, that's why I think it was such a huge impact what God showed us because we started understanding. You know, and it's like I've said, we're never going to understand everything. We can't think... As high as God, we're not going to understand how everything he does. But, but you know, in, in the word, when he says that the angels have charge over you, they won't let you dash your foot against a stone. When you're walking in his kingdom, I'm telling you, it is the truth. 
how many things has our family walked through? And those angels just took us right through it. Yeah, to our absolute dismay sometimes. Well, and I mean that time, you know, back in 2000, or no, um, 1995, when the weekend that the witch crawled in the van and, and we'd went to Walmart and all that stuff, I saw an angel. <laughs> he was he was smiling at me and Steffi. You know, you and Lisa were somewhere else in, in Walmart, and they, we were walking around, and, he, and I felt the horrors of what was going on around us because, I mean, there was a trap being set, and I could feel that, but I didn't feel fearful of him, and he was following us everywhere we went. And then when we, get, we got up to the front of the store, he took like a military stance is the only way I'd describe it, and he was staring at the door, and so I got up there trying to see what he was staring at, and it was two guys dressed in satanic garb. And so, I mean, I got to see an angel with my eyes. And it was, he just looked like a, a tall man. And, and he was dressed in like, like anybody else would be dressed, a shirt, pants. But I mean, he was there to protect us. And he, he smiled because he knew how much God loved us. Yeah. You know, we're on the same team. Yeah. And, and we're going to see more angels you know, that's that's what that upsets me so much about that thing at Six Flags. Just everybody trying to look like demons. We need to be looking for angels, holy angels. Yes. And yeah, we need to learn to walk in the holiness of God. One of the things that that I think prevent us to move, from moving in the level of authority that we're going to need to move in, you can only move in authority to the same level that you're walking in holiness. You have to be like Jesus. And right now the Spirit of God is speaking, saying, okay, that we're getting ready to go into the Day of Atonement. Mm-hmm. We've, had, we've had 10 days off. Get your hearts clean. Get right with me. Yeah. And it, it's, it's not just so that we survive what's coming. It's so that we can be used of him to do his will with what's coming. Yeah. There's, there's something going to be released during these, this feast season. Yes. Um. And I think I think it's the perfect timing of our conference because I, I just keep having God show me what I'm supposed to say, what I'm supposed to do. <clears throat> and I, I am believing for miracles. I mean lives being changed that maybe have struggled for years. I know it's coming. And I and I think um, I think fear <laughs> is getting ready to flee yes. in stark terror of what God is getting ready to do. And that's good news. I'm so sorry. We're just crying and boohooing. Um, the anointing is strong. Yeah. I want to see people get set free. It's it's long enough that God's people have been in bondage. It's long enough. It is. And, you know, I've, I've had, you know, friends that do other conferences and stuff and some of the feedback you hear and, and one of them, Mike Kerr, told me about this guy who had wrote him and said, listen, I believe God for anything. I can do anything. You know, I'm more than an overcomer, blah, 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 blah. And he said, but I'm afraid to come. And it's like, how do you, you said you would do anything for God, but yet you're operating out of fear. You see, there's there's this dichotomy that's got to die in the body of Christ. Fear keeps us back. I, I like what Rod Parsley said years ago. He said, fear is an acronym for false evidence that appears real. That's Yeah, I remember. That's good. And I, I, I thought that was so good because it's the enemy convincing you that he can do more than God. And you know what? I know my God. And on, on, on Satan's best day, he can't even come near what God can do. Huh. Not even remotely. No. Not even if he marshaled every demon and every principality and power that has fallen, <coughs> and they work in unison for that one moment, they can't even come near what God can do. No. All, all God has to do is speak a word. And that's why everything that's going on right now, you know, looks so horrid. But God laughs. It says he laughs Yeah, at all their big plans and schemes. And he's been, God's been waiting and preparing the prophets that are getting ready to leap <laughs> in the womb of what God's getting ready to birth. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, it doesn't matter how big it is. It can't compare to what God's getting ready to do. There, there is a, and you see this weaved into the, the Greek and Roman mythologies. Uh, there's this occult doctrine that they're going to be able to kill God. And it, it goes it goes all the way back even to, to Samaria that there was in Sumer that they uh, 
uh, that, you know, the, what became the Lucifer figure, the Satan figure announced, you know, the creator has died and therefore I'm now God. Let me tell you something. They did kill God once. Yeah, he rose again. <laughs> and it was the worst thing yeah. that they had ever done. Yeah, you betcha. See that those keys that Jesus got? Mm -hmm. He's getting ready to unlock some prisons. Yeah. He's going to unlock some prisons and he's getting ready to put some things into prisons. Into prison. prison. See, his his people are getting ready to come out. These things that have hurt children are getting ready to go in. You know, one of the neatest uh, scriptures, and I'll, I'm going to, uh, 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 with the ch one of the chapters I'm working on for my book, it, it, I believe it's out of Isaiah. It literally said that Almighty God is going to come and he's going to imprison the principalities and powers that have done all these things. But as it doesn't stop there, it says, and all the humans that were working with them, he brings to justice. You see, that's where we're headed. Isaiah yeah, it saw is. it. It is. That's where we're headed. That, uh, you know, there's, the sheriff's about ready to come back in town. And the sheriff is also <laughs> the king. Mary, if we understood the power of God, imagine the Valley of Armageddon. That I think even with the Hedron Collider and everything else, they're going to try to make the earth itself into a particle weapon to attack him. You're going to have, I don't think that Spielberg and George Lucas, none of them have the imagination to see the array. It's going to be the most powerful army ever put together. They're going to have weapons that are almost beyond our imagination. You're going to have Nephilim, everything else there to, to, to face off Jesus when he comes back. And the Bible says that when he comes back, that it's literally going to be like him treading grapes. That their tanks, their missiles, no matter what they have, he's going to go through it like it's nothing but paper. That's the God that we have to serve. That's, that's the king that we're serving. Well, that's why Satan is trying so hard to get more people on his side and build more power. He already saw the power when Jesus said, it's finished. Yes, and imagine, okay, let's say we need to get enough people. When Jesus rose from the dead, not even the 11 apostles believed. They, they weren't sitting there waiting for the resurrection. Everybody that was cognizant of what was going on said it was over. Hell said it had triumphed. With no one believing except the Father speaking over him. Mm -hmm. We find it in the book of Hebrews. That's all it takes. <laughs> That's all it takes. You see, all it takes is a word. Yeah. A word. A word. That's all it takes. When God speaks, nothing can stop it. Mm -mm. And God is getting ready to speak first a word of refreshment, over his people. You see, when Habakkuk came on the scene, I just read to you the situation that was there. Mary, for 21 years, they had tried to rebuild the temple, and it was getting worse and worse and worse, and there was iniquity, and there was violence on every side of them, and they could do nothing. They lived in fear. They and the, 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 <laughs> Habakkuk said, listen, you're laboring all day long and you're putting your money. And it's, it's like you have holes in the bottom of your purse. You can't get ahead. You can't do nothing. You're living in constant fear. But when he came, Habakkuk came with a new, fresh, prophetic unction. What they couldn't do in 21 years, they did in five, and the enemy couldn't stop it. I love it. And five <laughs> is the number of grace. He brought that prophetic, mm. brought a new level of grace mm. that they had never witnessed before and that's coming right now to the body of christ well you know i've always um liked to be in the back of the crowd i don't like being up in front um but whatever god's placed in my heart for this conference i'm chomping at the bit to get up there i can't wait to see it because i know what he promised me he's going to do yeah there 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 is an expectation in my heart and uh, one of the things that we have done is we have left a lot of buffer time 
So we know it's not just one speaker after another speaker after another speaker because if God begins to move, we actually have an hour or more that we yeah. can buffer in. And, and, if, and if God's not doing something supernatural, we have plenty of time for fellowship too. But it's like I want him to take control. That's the only way it's going to work. I, I want him to do his thing, you know what I mean? And <laughs> well, that's why I wanted to get the, the food and all that done, frozen, ready to to go, because I want to spend more time in prayer. I want to get pre- preparing and praying over that place more. And, um, yeah. Me we, we had some good stuff in the midst of a bunch of craziness, I can tell you, going on. Uh, we had the people that do the landscaping come and just clear out the front for us and i I didn't want to do that part because there's there was poison oak in there and and i'm so allergic to that stuff um and so i gave them gloves when they got there i said i think that's poison oak and he said yeah it is and i said let me get you gloves and you cannot even have to touch it just put these gloves on and they it looks so nice and yeah. the person that's spraying washing the outside of the building has done such he hasn't done but what he has done is just it's, it's remarkable. Gonna, such a big building it's going to take him a week yeah but, but it's, it's it's really looking good it and, is we're, we're and, getting closer and closer and, and there's been a lot of walking and praying and, and different things going on over there already and it's been that way for months we're not going to be able to do a podcast for the rest of the month um but as soon as we can after the conference we'll be getting those up yeah we'll have we'll, six complete sessions we'll that pick we'll go right post. back up after that and uh, we'll sure be praying for you guys and love you so much and um i know that there's there's several Planned on coming that couldn't come. Well, we're next time. Next time. <laughs> next time, yeah. We're we're already beginning to pray about the one in, in the spring of next year. And uh, so God's doing some things. We've not set any dates or anything for it, but when we do, we'll, we'll let you guys know. We want to get this one under our belt, learn from any mistakes, and <laughs> and then say, okay, next year, next time we're going to do this better, and we'll do it's this a, a little bit different. It's a learning process, I can it's, tell you. It's a learning process, but it's an exciting process. We just want you to know that we love you guys and that just believe that God's going to move, that he's going to do wonderful things. And I believe it's going to be that way, Mary, not only at the conference, but I believe it's going to be that way for people that watch it online. after. Oh, we, I, we post I it believe it's going to be there for yeah. that to come in their homes. Yeah, now we don't have the bandwidth there to do live streaming, but once we're re- recording everything, we'll, we'll upload it. You know, I, I got a, a, a sweet email from a, a lady that uh, – I said that she was watching one of our videos when I guess I was teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and she got baptized in the Holy Spirit right there in her own oh, living room. Oh, praise God. And you, d- you just love hearing things like that because that anointing carries on. Yeah. And that, that's and why we post them. Thank you for the cards and emails letting us know what God's doing in your life. That encourages us so much. We praise God every time we get one and just cry a lot around here. Yeah, we do. Most of them happy tears. <laughs> yeah. We got a sweet note this morning that uh, this woman has two six-year-olds, and they they love. Oh, to li- I loved and, it, <laughs> and they they love to listen to my teachings. And I'm thinking, you know what? I don't want to hear the, an ad- adult telling me, "Okay, you're preaching over my head." When I have six-year-olds wanting to listen, <laughs> uh, then bless their hearts. I love that. I, I do too. It just blesses my heart like you wouldn't believe. And so, Father, we just pray over every remnant member. Father, we just ask that you would release a fresh prophetic anointing. Father, yes. strengthen them. Yes, Father, set them free in the name of Jesus and strengthen them and prepare them for the days ahead, Father, for the battle, for the work, and, Father, for that which you have called them to do. Now, Mary and I stand in our authority, and, Father, we bind up the enemy over our lives, yes. and we say in that he is a Jesus. defeated foe. And, Father, we, we say, fill up your people with your spirit. Yes. Fill Loose them up the with purpose. Power of the kingdom of God. Loose them as mighty weapons in your kingdom, we ask, in Jesus' name. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life. 
P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.